serious redditors who were almost murdered, what's your story? I was coming home from a bachelor's party at 2 a.m. and on the way home, I realized we all had forgotten the steak dinner portion of the evening that we had all planned. I didn't want to wake up my wife and baby, drunkenly rummaging around the kitchen, so I had the taxi drop me off at the Dunkin' Donuts a half mile from my house this was pre-Uber times. I got myself a couple egg and cheese bagels and started walking home. Now, I made sure to take the quieter neighborhood street rather than the busier street in order to make sure to avoid potential drunk drivers. However, about a block into the neighborhood, I see a pair of dudes coming my way down the sidewalk. I consider crossing the street, but realize how insulting that would be to the two men clearly just walking home from a fun evening just like me. When they are a few feet away, I give them a how you doing? Not, and they returned it with their own. I was so proud of my decision to treat them like fellow bros and not be so suspicious. Then, as they walk past me, one of them pulls his hand up in the air, holding a tire iron, and strikes me in the back of the head hard. I fall into the street from the impact but remain conscious. One holds my arms down while the other climbs on my legs and starts rifling through my pockets. I tell them to take what they want and they tell me to shut up or they will kill me. Then they ask me where my wallet is, and when I tell them which pocket it is in, they tell me to shut up or they will kill me. They took my wallet phone and watch, and then kicked a few more times in the head but then took off. I was bleeding and super concussed, and without a phone at 2.30 am, and there was no way I could make it home on my own. I saw a house nearby where the flickering light of a TV could be seen in an upstairs bedroom. I crawled over to the house, and pulled myself up onto the porch, and leaned against the door and knocked and hollered for help. The homeowner was rightfully scared and didn't want to open the door at that hour for a stranger who wouldn't even stand up to be seen through his front door's viewfinder. I was feeling very faint at this point and was covered in blood from the head wound, but convinced him to call 911 and get an ambulance. I also asked if he could call my wife. At that point he seemed to feel more confident that I was not trying to trick him, and he offered me a cordless phone through a chain door. He said he wanted to help, but I needed to stay out on the porch, because he had just redone his floors and I was bleeding way too much. When the EMTs arrived, they decide they should take me to the better hospital instead of the one a few blocks away, but the route to the other hospital required several blocks of driving on cobblestones, an experience I would not recommend to any concussed individual strapped to a gurney in the back of an ambulance. I needed 24 staples in my head and the doctors all told me I was lucky to have survived such a massive blow to the head with a blunt object. But the sad part. I never actually got my egg and cheese bagels. When I was young maybe 4 or 5 years old, my family lived in a small town of about 1,200 people. It was mostly a farming town. My dad was the manager of the only bank in town. A farmer missed some payments on a loan, so the bank foreclosed and took his farm. This farmer apparently blamed my father personally, so he went to the bank with a rifle and threatened my father. My father talked to him, cops were called, and the farmer was arrested and arraigned. Bail was posted for the farmer, so he was released from jail. A few days later, my family was eating dinner and we heard a truck pull up and park in front of our house. It was a really quiet street in a small town, so my father went to the front window to see who pulled up. It was the farmer, and this time he had a shotgun. He walked right up to the front door and knocked, and my family busted ass out of the back door and ran to a neighbor's house. Our front door was unlocked so he could have opened it and blasted us all, but I guess he didn't think to check it. Cops were again called, and the farmer was arrested. My family spent the next week or so in a hotel a few towns away until it was assured that the farmer would be in jail without the possibility of bail. My now ex-boyfriend wanted a gun. I grew up shooting and know enough about guns and gun safety to know he wasn't mature enough for a gun. I told him not to get one. But on his 21st birthday, he went out and bought one. 
He was so proud of that thing and would constantly take it apart and clean it. One night, he's sitting on the couch, across the room from the TV, cleaning his gun at a long end of the coffee table. I'm perpendicular to him, sitting on the floor, crafting at a short end of same coffee table. Suddenly, the gun goes off. I freak the duck out. My ex is sitting there, looking stunned. He shot the goddamned cable box. For some stupid ducking reason, he thought it was a good idea to point the gun and dry fire it. He was convinced it was unloaded. He initially aimed it at my head I was engrossed in my crafting and didn't notice, thought better of that and aimed it at the TV. Thought better of that and aimed it at the cable box and ducking shot it. It went through the cable box, then through the walls parallel to a long halfway and ended up in a closet wall. Fortunately, none of the rooms were occupied and it didn't go into an adjacent apartment. I was expecting police to show up, but none ever did. That ducker almost shot me, and I was too dumb to nope the duck out of the relationship for a couple more years. We were playing tag, and some kid was it, and I was trying to run away from him. As he was closing by I ran to this truck nearby, parked on the road. Then he looked left, and tried to push me out on the road. Me, who was too busy trying to avoid him, got hit by a car. The kid laughed his ass off while I was screaming in pain, and he stopped laughing when the person who hit me yelled at the kid what is so ducking funny about this horrible situation. I think I did tell the police about how the kid tried to lure me out, and the dude who hit me confessed there was a kid laughing when he got out of the car. The police only pressed charged against the person who hit me, and did not do anything about the kid. Our family moved to a different city right after when I got out of the hospital. My brother struggled with mental health issues his entire life. When I was really young he pushed me into the deep end of the pool knowing I couldn't swim and walked away. They found me floating face down in the pool shortly after and had to resuscitate me. Years later he took his own life. Mental health issues are not to be ignored. I was a freshman in college and, in my first semester, pledged a fraternity. One night, I was assigned to work the door at a party which was not uncommon. Around 1.30 to 2 a.m., a group of guys that worked at the dining hall I remember the one because he made an amazing cheesesteak showed up and each paid $5 per cup. A few minutes after they paid, the last keg kicked and none of them got any beer. As soon as they told me that the kegs just kicked, I started counting out cash to pay them back for the cups that they bought. Before I could get them their money back, one of my drunk pledge brothers decided to physically force them out the door while yelling slash shit talking them. As soon as I could calm my buddy down I went outside to give them their cash back, only to be met with a big, big surprise. When I made it down the back steps, cheesesteak guy aggressively steps forward and says y'all made a big ducking mistake. I'm strapped as a mother ducker, pulls a handgun out of his waistband and points it directly between my eyes. In that moment, it was remarkable that 18-year-old me didn't sheet his pants immediately. A few of the older guys in the house stepped outside and were able to talk the guy down without incident but it felt like I had that gun pointed between my eyes for an eternity. Long story short, I was incredibly lucky that I didn't get shot that night. Needless to say, I went without cheesesteaks for a few semesters after that night. This is my aunt's story but it's too good to not share. My aunt was almost killed by the famous serial killer Michael Swango, the killer doctor. She worked as a unit secretary at the ward he worked in regularly and they knew each other well. Part of his routine was poisoning people he worked with and he admitted after he was caught he was planning on killing her but his co-workers got suspicious of him and he left town before he had the chance. My great aunt's story, not mine. It's famous in my family. Her husband ran the one convenience store in town. One day she was stocking drinks and Robert pulls a shotgun on her husband. She walks up behind him and tells him off, he turns to point the gun at her. Big mistake. She yanked the gun toward her, he fired and the recoil went upward enough to dislocate her shoulder, but he let go of the gun. 
She proceeded to beat him unconscious with the butt of the gun, and sat on top of him until the police arrived. It's almost like something out of a movie, but I hear about that one time every Thanksgiving. I was working at a gas station. It was at night and slow, so I was sitting in the office watching TV. All of a sudden, one guy comes in behind me, another guy comes in in front of me. Guy in front says don't get up. I give him the wad of cash from my breast pocket, and then the money from my front pocket. They rush out back into the darkness. I stay put, just like the guy said. Then I call the owner. A car pulls up to get gas. I tell them they need to pay by credit card or exact change because I just got robbed. Then I reach up to touch my neck. It was bloody. The guy in back was holding a knife to my throat. 